helping people with daily tips to reduce creatinine and kidney issues. There are six daily tips that will take only a few minutes of your day but can make a huge difference in managing chronic kidney disease, CKD. There's a nutrient that slows CKD progression by up to 44%, a nap that makes eating easier, a way to eat bananas that actually helps lower your potassium levels, and much more. In my videos, I always focus on little-known ways to protect kidney function, things your doctor won't know about for another decade. So, what if I told you that taking a simple antacid with meals could help address two of the biggest dangers CKD patients face? Tip 6. Use antacids to control oxalates and phosphorus. You won't hear this anywhere else. Many of you have heard of the common antacid, Tums. These antacids are made of calcium carbonate which is interesting because calcium carbonate binds with phosphorus in the food you eat. The phosphorus is then excreted through the intestines, effectively preventing your body from absorbing excess phosphorus. This is important because phosphorus is the reason dairy is restricted. When this mineral accumulates, the body pulls calcium from the bones. High phosphorus levels are also linked to faster kidney function decline and a higher risk of death. So, taking a few tums with meals can make a huge difference for your kidneys. It may even mean that a little cheese or milk can be back on your menu if your phosphorus levels are controlled. But there's more. Some kidney patients, especially those on restricted fluid intake, are also at risk for oxalate stones. They may need to avoid very healthy foods like spinach, beets, rhubarb, beans, and nuts. Taking calcium with these foods can make a big difference because dietary calcium also prevents oxalates from crystallizing in the kidneys. In summary, take 800 to 2000 mg of calcium carbonate daily with your main meals to help control your phosphorus and oxalate levels. Plus. You don't need to buy name brand Tums, food grade calcium carbonate is also sold as powder or tablets for just a few cents. As always, discuss dosage and safety with your doctor. Calcium carbonate is very safe. Tip 5. Use fiber to lower serum potassium. Now, let's talk about another mineral that kidney patients struggle with, potassium. If your doctor told you to avoid bananas, potatoes, tomatoes, and avocados, that advice might soon be outdated. Research now shows that the reason some patients have high serum potassium levels isn't actually their diet. The 2023 kidney guidelines go even further, now recommending that doctors check whether their patients are constipated before restricting potassium intake. Constipation, a common issue in CKD patients, has been proven to cause high potassium levels. Improve your fiber intake. Eating more fruits and vegetables, including potassium-rich ones, can actually help lower your potassium levels. You may also consider using a fiber supplement. One of the most effective fiber supplements for promoting regularity and directly improving kidney function is acacia fiber. In fact, acacia fiber has even been used as a form of gut dialysis to help delay kidney failure in stage 5 patients. In summary, taking 1 to 4 tablespoons of acacia fiber daily with plenty of water can treat constipation, lower serum potassium levels and directly improve kidney health. The best part? Once your potassium levels are back to normal, you can actually use potassium to improve kidney function. Tip 4. Eat more bananas to improve kidney function. When patients with stage 3 and 4 kidney disease were instructed to eat more fruits and vegetables, they witnessed a miracle. The progression of kidney disease stopped. Some patients even experienced improvements in kidney function, all thanks to a diet rich in fruits and vegetables. 
This was a major, significant study published in the Journal of Renal Nutrition. Now, what I want to highlight is that these patients were also advised to ignore most warnings about potassium-rich foods. They were instructed to eat potatoes daily and consume a variety of vegetables, including potassium-rich ones like kale, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. Later, another study also demonstrated a link between increased dietary potassium intake and better kidney outcomes, as well as longer life expectancy. All right, I know that most of your doctors have told you to avoid potassium-rich foods, but that advice might be outdated for many patients. You see, only 1 in 5 CKD patients has excessively high potassium levels. And if your potassium levels aren't too high, eating potassium-rich foods won't cause hyperkalemia. For those without high potassium levels, low-sodium or salt-free alternatives could also be an option. These salt substitutes taste like regular salt but are made from potassium, so they help lower blood pressure instead of raising it. As always, I don't recommend making dietary changes or taking supplements without consulting your doctor first. And while you're at it, show them the new 2023 CKD treatment guidelines, especially the section that states doctors should actively investigate other contributing factors to hyperkalemia before reducing dietary potassium intake. And what about those who do have high potassium levels? According to the new guidelines, there are ways to lower potassium levels without dietary restrictions. Tip 3. Use intermittent fasting to say goodbye to diabetes. Diabetes is the leading cause of kidney disease worldwide. Treating it means treating kidney disease for many patients, and it is well known that intermittent fasting is an effective way to fight diabetes if done correctly. It can also benefit non-diabetics since it's a great strategy for weight loss, controlling high blood pressure, and managing cholesterol. A recent trial even showed that intermittent fasting can be used, at least for some patients, to reverse type 2 diabetes. In the study, 17 out of 36 type 2 diabetes patients were able to achieve diabetes remission. This means they had HbA1c levels below 6.5% for at least 3 months after stopping all diabetes medications. Now, this might sound incredible, but we should also consider the study's limitations. These patients were specifically chosen because researchers believe they had a higher chance of reversing diabetes. However, the researchers successfully proved their point diabetes can be reversed through intermittent fasting. In summary, this is an exciting breakthrough, but it also comes with risks. The risk of hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, is quite high when practicing intermittent fasting, and there is a large body of evidence linking meal skipping and fasting with various kidney-related complications, especially, but not exclusively, in people with diabetes. Another study even found a connection between the number of breakfasts a person eats per week and their number of hospitalizations. Researchers highlighted these findings by referencing multiple studies linking low meal frequency and skipping breakfast to a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes. They also noted that spending too much time in a fasting state without drinking water could be harmful to the kidneys. So, does that mean intermittent fasting is bad for you? Not necessarily. Intermittent fasting is not the same as skipping meals. It is a dietary tool, a controlled, structured method for reducing calorie intake. On the other hand, if we fast for too long, perhaps because we're too busy to eat and drink, without properly managing calorie intake, we could be at risk of kidney damage. In short, if you have diabetes, you can adjust your diet with intermittent fasting and potentially beat diabetes. Just be careful and do your research before starting.
Now, let me know in the comments if you'd like to learn more about reversing diabetes with this diet. Diet plans are never easy with CKD and diabetes, but they are 100% necessary. Number 2. Use an app to track your nutrition. But what if I told you there's a trick to making your diet easier to set up and track? When it comes to a kidney diet, tracking how much carbohydrates, protein, phosphorus, sodium, and vitamins you consume is never easy. While the general population can survive with an unstructured eating plan, people with kidney issues don't have that luxury, especially if you're trying to improve your kidney health. There are two ways to achieve this crucial goal. The easiest way is to have your dietitian set up a meal plan for you, and you follow it as precisely as possible. The downside here is that you may have to give up many seasonal foods that your dietitian doesn't account for, and making any changes to your diet isn't easy. The alternative is to use an app that accurately tracks your nutrition intake. With the right app, you'll know exactly how much protein, carbohydrates, sodium, and more you consume with each meal, every day. And that's a game changer for people with kidney issues because, in many cases, just a few grams of protein or carbohydrates can make all the difference. Some of the best apps for this include Nutritionix, MyFitnessPal, Chronometer, and many others. They all do a similar job, allowing you to track your intake with enough accuracy to monitor your nutrition levels. The app one personally use is Chronometer. The free version lets me do almost everything I need. Using this app is simple. You can log any food you eat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and the app will tell you exactly how much protein, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, and other nutrients you're getting. You can also set daily targets for these nutrients, which is incredibly helpful. These apps are free and available on Android, iPhone, and even PC via a web browser. In short, there are apps that allow you to track all your macro and micronutrients. They can be life-saving for those following a kidney diet and for people who take insulin. Number 1. The one daily tip in this video. This is our number one tip because it actually slows down kidney disease by up to 44% and with just one vitamin. In a recent study, 15,104 stage 3 and 4 patients were able to delay dialysis for up to 10 years simply by adding one vitamin to their regimen. This is a vitamin that anyone taking ACE inhibitors, a very common blood pressure medication, should consider taking. This is an incredible development in kidney disease treatment. The fact that such a significant slowdown in kidney function decline can be achieved with just one vitamin makes this even more remarkable. In this study, 15,104 patients who were also taking ACE inhibitors were followed for over four years. They were divided into two groups. One group took only ACE inhibitors to manage their blood pressure, this was the control group. The other group also took a single daily dose of folic acid, or vitamin B9, along with their blood pressure medication. It's important to note that they were given 0.8 mg of folic acid per day. 0.8 mg per day is a dosage you can get from most multivitamins suitable for kidney patients but many foods can also help you reach that amount. This vitamin is found in significant amounts in foods like okra, spinach, asparagus, lettuce, sweet corn, sunflower seeds, and oils. In short, make sure you're getting enough B vitamins, especially if you're taking blood pressure medication or if your homocysteine levels are too high. Alright, everyone, that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.